Hello guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Launa K. I'm a Namibian YouTuber and I'm based in the Erongo guys, region. So don't mind my background. I'm still working out on um, on what to do with my background. But yeah, otherwise sit back and relax as I'm going to um, to share with you uh, story time. Okay. Story time, story time, story time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so today's a day of it's black. The hair is kind of black and everything is black and it's cold this side. It's cold. So please, um, wherever you are, if you're in a place where it's cold, um, I'll be waiting for you to go and make your cup of tea, your cappuccino, your whatever. So for me here, as you can see, yeah, so it's not those movie cups where somebody just apparently drink <laughs> and there's nothing, guys. Mm. So today, I don't know, guys, after when I just recovered, um, my appetite is uh, a little bit, is it high or maybe normal? But I think God it has helped me to recover my weight. So this is just bread. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. Mm. So today is story time. Mm-hmm. Story time. Mm-hmm. Mm. Story time. Mm. For those who are new here. Please, you are welcome. You are welcome. On this channel, we speak about candid talk, faith, lifestyle, vlogs. And uh, I will see if we are going to also aid many others. By the grace of God and according to how the Spirit of the Lord is leading. Okay. So today we are going to talk about, you know, as I was just talking, uh, sitting today, or I've just write down, yeah, stop. That's why you see me. I'll be looking down. As I was just sitting today with my husband, I was just reflecting. I was just talking. But I want to talk to you guys. This one is my channel. It's a channel that I have uh, created to tell my story. Okay? My story. Not to tell your story. And, um, um, it's, it's, it, this is the way I heal is the way I get restored. And this is the way I probably will help somebody who would be going through what I, I went through or who is currently going through what I had been through and them hearing my story, they might learn and realize, no, there is hope. Okay. And uh, I am not telling this because I'm looking for sympathy. I'm not telling my story because I'm looking for whatever. No, I'm just telling because I believe it is expected of me by the Lord to testify. Okay. And um, yeah, simple. This is my story. And also the main thing that inspired this was... Um, there was one time that somebody very close, you know, um, after when I gave birth to my biological child, um, the doctor was whistling, whistling, yeah? yeah, when I was like, when they were busy with the process, and they were like, how did this child survive in this womb? So, but I did not yet, uh, you know, grasp, you know, the whole thing about it. Only many years later, 11, 12 years later, when I went through laparoscopy, when I went through um, a lot of operations in attempts to conceive my second biological child, and uh, it has not worked. And just to be told that, um, you know, you are fortunate to have gotten a child while you were very young because these fibroids would not, would not, would not have allowed you to conceive. 
And this is why you see many people have got, you know, uh, fertility issues. It, it's, a lot of them is due to those fibroid disclaimer. I'm not a doctor, but I'm just here yeah, out of an experience. So um, come to the reason. And um, one day I was just sitting with one of my closest people. And um, the person just said, um, so the person, was, the person was just saying, why are you complaining of wanting to have a lot of children while you have been aborting? My goodness, it was like a sword on my heart. Knowing how I'm yearning to have my own child, like second child, biological child, knowing how I did not use contraceptive, knowing what the doctor told me, and knowing what runs in my lineage, because my great-grandmothers, great-grandmothers, I think they were just two with one brother. Imagine there are only three. And then the number come down to my uh, great-grandmother's sister, got only maybe four children, and she got six. And then my grandmother, who gave birth to my mother, got only two children and my mother was born uh let me say 17 years after uh the, the, the sister who's my auntie there was no miscarriage nothing and then um my mother uh, gave birth to us five and my mother's sister gave birth to my cousin you know um after 40 years of her life you know and um, my cousin's supposed to be our eldest now. She's supposed to be in her 50s, 50 plus, but she is now, you know, she's younger than us. And uh, us five, then I was able to have one biological child, and that is why we adopted. And my older sister got five, and the list goes on. So knowing what runs in my lineage, and everybody knows, like around me, and for somebody to come and say, I have aborted, why would I want to have many children? It struck me and I thought, let me find a way on how I can be telling my story. Right, so I don't know where I've ended, um, but yeah, the battery went low on me. Not battery, the space, I ran out of space. My reason why I'm, you know, I'm, I have created this channel is um, I don't want my my grandchildren to be told by a stranger that um, this is what your mother your grandmother had been through and things like that no mm -mm. my grandchildren must go on the tube and then they switch on and they search on grandma um launa and i don't know i might i might rebrand as time goes you know uh guys i'm just not satisfied with the colors i don't know that's because of this color that is facing here for the room light but um i'm sure you can see me mm -hmm. if you can see me you can see me okay yeah, so I don't want somebody to go and tell my children nonsense, my grandchildren. I want them to go. I don't know. You know, we came from, uh, we came from, uh, what was, first we used to, to search on, 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 what was that? There was, in, there was something we used to search. And then Google became like common to everybody. And then there was your Facebook, there was, then it was your whatever. Um, but yeah, then YouTube. So I don't know what it's going to be then. So I don't want somebody to go and tell my grandchildren nonsense. Okay. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's my story about fertility. So I come from that lineage where we don't have a lot of children. And um, so that is why, no, God has allowed this to come my way. So that I must also show mercy to somebody else, you know, my, our second daughter. And, um, and also I was able to have a bigger space 
for my nieces and nephews and also strangers. Okay, so basically, that is what it is, and that this is who I am. And my story is about this. I, I don't want to, it is not my intention to expose myself, as I will keep repeating, saying that I'm telling you what the Lord will allow me to tell you. Above all, the truth will set us free. There's no use for me to come on this YouTube and I come and lie. One day it will come out. Mm hmm so mm. I'm done mm. okay mm. so okay let me share with you this story time right mm. the last time I we went to the doctor and uh, we're trusting the Lord for a second child and um, the doctor said no you can go for uh, you can go for um, laparoscopy first laparoscopy where you get they put the camera through your navel so then I did not work hmm <laughs> guys you know you know the love of money the love of money is the root of all evil. Most of these doctors, they are making money out of us by cutting us. So then it did not work. Then I came back the second time. I came back with um, one lady. I think the two of us, we did not conceive. The other one conceived. And we went back. And each time I go back, the fibroids grew back the third time so my late mom was still alive i didn't tell mom that i was going through this hassle getting operated the fibers to be cut out uh trying to conceive and because i i did not know i, I think i did not take to concentration or advance in my bloodline it is not a curse. I believe it is a plan of God. Because if it was a curse, the Lord would, would not have given me at all a child. And even for those who are still waiting to trust the Lord, who are still waiting for the Lord to, to open their womb, they are not cursed. I want to tell you guys, your brother has married a woman and uh, she is taking forever to conceive what that woman need. It's not you slandering her, not you telling her how infertile she is, not you telling her, you know, how she has been taking contraceptive, how she has been running around, how she has been in clubs. No. What your sister-in-law need, mama-in-law, what your daughter-in-law need, what your friend need is for you to encourage them. Encourage them. Inspire them. That listen, it is well. It is well not. It is, you know, just tell them it is not well to not have a child, guys. But, you know, what the person needs, when the person is on a hunt to have a child, if I can put it that way, they need encouragement. What they need is encouragement. So the last time when I went in for the operation, apparently, according to the doctors, they apparently i took longer because i was taking long to revive because this time around the operation was big so after a time i went back and i said nothing is happening guys this is what the doctor did to me i think i could have conceived through ivf but they brought to me a doctor who was a student doctor he cut my uh, my tubes, filio, filio, da, da, da. Guyana people, please help me. They cut my tubes, so they cl closed me, so that I cannot conceive by any means, not even by IVF. So then they separate my womb from my tubes, and I went there. And uh, this other doctor, who is now late, um, he, Dr. Kimbega, no, 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 ah, another one. Okay, so 
uh, then he was like, uh, yeah, I think we can send you to Cape Town. You can go and conceive. I mean, you can go for IVF. And that time in the 90s, late 90s, IVF was 45,000. Now you are going to pay for IVF. You are going to pay for the transport. You are going to pay for your staying there. And you had to stay there. I don't know. It was more than two months and those kind of a thing. So then my partner said, no, I'm not going to buy a child because he understood that his IVF is buying a child of maybe, I don't know whether it's like that. I don't know, but I don't think so. Because what a woman need is somebody to nature. Um, so then I went to the doctors. I said, tell me, what did you actually do on me? No, we were trying to take the fibroids out, but they grew back again. And then later on, I realized these people, they actually closed my womb without my concern. So when I was now looking for my file to go and open a case or something, just to be told, no, there was never a Dr. Orford here. And I was like, what? Dr. Orford came from Cape Town. He looked like an albinism and he's the one who operated me. And I used to go for follow-up in Vinduk. No, we don't know about that because they have realized that they have made a mistake. So for me, what I needed was not a child, but I just needed my organs to be as they have found them. They got money and they messed me up. And listen here, this is how they did to me. I used to be, um, to, to, to wear, whenever I buy clothes, I used to, because I've got figures, I used to wear, to buy bigger size and make them smaller to fit my waist. My waist was very smaller than my figures. So what they did is when they operated me, I went to another gyna. What they did, they just put my intestine and pushed it inside. And apparently they were supposed to take the fat out. They haven't taken the fat out. So now if you don't know me, you will say, oh my goodness, look at this much. She's so beautiful on the face, but her waist, she's got a, a bloated tummy. My tummy is not bloated. That is what happened, you know, when you don't know your lineage, when you have a partner who is forcing you to do something that naturally is abnormal, when you have in-laws that are forcing you that you cannot have children, and uh, and how 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 come you have a, you have a, you have you have this other child, but you don't want to give our son a child? And I I fell under pressure. I I I I I was like I wanted to please them, and in the meantime I was dying. In the meantime, so my mother told me, don't try this operation anymore don't try it anymore you have that child and that child is enough it's even a girl she's enough and that is how i i actually approached my mom and she was like um no in our culture we don't adopt and things like that but uh, i was like girlfriend this time around i'm going to go beyond culture and i'm telling you um after when i've adopted my uh, our daughter I have inspired a lot of people, even people close to me, relatives, they adopted, my friends, they adopted because they saw that it was doable. So be, that is to tell you that what we need is not 120 operations, surgeries, and whatever. What we need is to nature somebody. So the moral of the story is that, um, you know, don't, Put yourself, woman, don't put yourself under pressure. Don't go for operations and surgeries to please your husband, to please your parents in law and your friends that you can conceive. Do it because you, you feel satisfied to do it. Otherwise, you will die in the theater. You will uh, pick up a lot of stuff. And it is you that will feel it in your body. Like it's me now with a bigger waist. And... Uh, those people are gone out of my life. Those that were the reason for me to go for operations. And glory be to God, I have married my friend, and that will lead us to our next title. My husband, he's he's like, for me, I need you alive. So that other drama must just go. Okay, I'm coming. So basically, that's it. Um, yeah, trying to please people. And, uh, yeah, and, 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 and the thing is, guys, don't force people. Don't ask them, oh, when are you, when is, when is the baby coming? Okay, like me also, I, sometimes, sometimes I find myself doing that. But, um, yeah, sometimes just leave them. 
or rather advise them, ask them, how can I help you? Maybe they'll be like, pray for us or suggest maybe, but with respect and they should be really your close, close friends. Otherwise, um, it's, um, it's not really good, you know, to assume the person has been using contraceptive, the person has been aborting. Like in our culture, vambos, they like to be like, oh, we go for and all The person has just been aborting and blah, blah, blah. Goodness, you don't know the person. Even if they have been aborting, is their body, just you keep quiet and leave them. Pray for them. Yeah, so, yeah, so that's why for me, when I've started this channel, please, I want my children, my grandchildren must go. I don't know if there's going to be Google that day. I don't know those years. But guys, you know, for me, this is my story. This is my channel. This is my channel. It's my book. It's my audio book. It's my, um, how do you call it? Is it like graphical or whatever book? This is me. You know, guys, I try to write my book, but every time when I write the book, ah, I just don't come to that point okay so yeah basically that is what it is um the lord has just blessed me with one biological child and then the second one is adopted and i am so satisfied and you know how beautiful god is the biological is born on the 26th of this month and the adopted is on the 19th of this month is god not wonderful I thank God and I'm happy. So this is my story. My grandchildren, one day when you watch this, grandma had only one biological child and one adopted child. And she is happy because she's still going to be alive by the time you watch this. Yeah, so that's what it, that's what it is, my viewers. I love you so much and um, look forward for the next episode. God bless you.